हेलो गाइस एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल स्टडी विद साइंस so in the previous video we have discussed about how a girl should treat her periods and in this video we are going to discuss about the scientific reasons behind the traditional practices that we practice during a periods and uh, coming to this traditional practices especially in the southern part of india there are a huge number of traditional practices like menstrual seclusion which means keeping the menstruating woman separate not allowing her to touch any other thing or not allowing her to touch any other person and not, not allowing her into the kitchen and not allowing her into the temples or not she is not supposed to even take a prasad so all these things uh, are comes under this menstrual seclusions that we practice as traditional practices for the menstruation so as we cannot discuss all these things in one small video in this video i am focusing on a simple and the main important thing that is menstrual seclusion which means keeping the women menstruating women separate and keeping this rules that she should not touch any other person she should not enter into the kitchen she should not touch any other object even so we are going to discuss the sciences behind all these things and one satisfactory answer we have for all these things is that they say that in the previous days we have the huge joint families and the women who were a part of this joint family has to work all the month restlessly she has to cook to all the people she has to work for all the people and these three to four days uh, that she suffers from a menstrual pain is offered her um, to get some rest in respect to of all the jobs uh, she is doing all through the month and as this reason is um, quite good we find it as a most satisfactory answer but still there is a lot of science behind this traditional practices especially the menstrual seclusions that we are going to discuss in this video and after discussing all these things i'm damn sure that even you will be surprised just like me at the depth to which uh, the menstruation was understood by our ancestors so let's get started discussing about these things in order to understand these things in detail one must have a wholesome knowledge in the quantum theory in the atomic theory in the free radical theory that means one must have a basic knowledge in the biology physics and chemistry as well so for those who have not had enough of the knowledge in all these things i'll start discussing from the beginning of this story and so in our body there is these things called free radicals so what are these free radicals free radicals are the atoms so there are these things called atoms in each and every object in each and every body as the fundamental units of the body or the object so the atom has its shells around it in each and every shell we'll have these things called electrons so the number of electrons depends on the atom which is it so if it is helium it has two electrons if it is carbon it has six electrons and so on and if it is oxygen it has eight electrons so what are these free radicals so this atom is said to be stable if the outermost shell of the atom is fully filled with the electrons if the outermost shell of the atom has unpaid electrons then we will say it as an unstable so these unstable atoms which have unpaid electrons are said to be as free radicals so this is the basic atomic theory in the chemistry which we study in 6th or 7th standards so coming to this human body during all the processes like metabolism excretion digestion and and any other functioning there is a production of this huge amount of this free radicals so i'm coming again so free radicals are the atoms which has unstable outermost electrons so as they are unstable they always tend to receive the electrons from the atom that is closely available to it so in our body there is a huge production of this free radicals this free radicals occur to each and every atom each and every atom and molecule so the most important thing is oxygen so oxygen has two unpaid electrons in the outermost shell so hence oxygen has more tendency to accept the electrons from the atoms that is closely available to the oxygen atom so this increase in the oxygen free radicals is said to be as oxidative stress whenever there is a huge production of the free radicals the person will uh, the person will eventually lead to oxidative stress 
so to balance these free radicals oxygen free radicals there are these things called antioxidants which will hear in the tea ads uh, like green tea ad or other tea ads that uh, the, this this tea has specific higher amounts of antioxidants so these antioxidants are those particles which can compensate the free radicals so these antioxidants offer the electrons to the unstable free radicals hence they can compensate the free radicals and they can reduce the oxidative stress and our human body naturally produces the antioxidants in the form of blood or in the form of estrogen progesterone hormones etc so in the body naturally the oxidative stress gets compensated with the natural production of this antioxidants so in the case of menstruation the menstruating woman one side she has this loss of blood and on the other side she has this decreased estrogen levels so in which she had a decreased levels of the natural antioxidants that is produced by her own body so there is a and this is what about the antioxidant level in the menstruating woman and on the other hand the uterine layers the uterine layers of the menstruating woman means the endometrial layers tends to get shed off from her uh, uh, uterus and excrete in the form of blood so here she is having some wound like thing in the uterine layers as she the layers are shedding off and there is a increased amount of this free radicals in this process uh, the free radical levels are increasing in this in this situation and the antioxidant natural antioxidant levels that is uh, to be produced by the body is decreasing in this situation so as there is a increased level of this free radicals and decreased levels of this antioxidants she is having a high oxidative stress so people who have this high oxidative stress in the in the time of menstruation use it to have this period pain means muscle cramps stomach cramps back pain and legs pain and even breast pain sometimes and all these things are just a result of this oxidative stress that the menstruating woman is having so she is having high oxidative stress which means she had lots of oxygen free radicals which means she had lot of these atoms that have higher tendency to accept the electrons from the atom that is closely available to it so whenever this menstruating woman comes in contact with a um, healthy human being who is having higher number of normal atoms the electrons from this healthy human being tend to shift to the electrons tend to shift to the atoms that are uh, in urge of the electrons so that so there is a shift of electrons from the healthy human being to the menstruating woman hence this results in the oxidative stress of this healthy human being as well so in a summary we can say as menstruating woman when comes in contact with the healthy human being there is a shift of electrons from the healthy human being to the menstruating woman so that this can result in bringing up the healthy human being into the oxidative stress so we have this specific uh, traditional practice that menstruating woman should not touch any other person transfer of electrons from one object to another object is mainly studied under quantum physics and we don't have the same concept in the biology which is termed as quantum biology so we are not familiar with this concept but our ancestors our forefathers have studied this in detail and had kept this traditional practice that menstruating women should not touch any other person because there is there will be a transfer of electrons from one person to the other this is the reason behind the traditional practice like menstrual seclusion and keeping the menstruating woman away from all of the family members so without knowing these scientific reasons what we uh, blindly believe is that menstruating woman is impure and if these menstruating women touches any other person that the other person also can become impure so i strongly believe this this impure thing means believing that menstruating pe menstruating person is impure menstruating women is impure have arrived from this traditional practice but this traditional practice itself has a huge science behind it it never says that the menstruating woman is impure and if anybody touches the menstruating woman can become impure it is not right 
the only thing behind it is oxidative stress and quantum biology so make sure you know these things very well and do not give this type of knowledge like considering the menstruating women as impure to your younger generations and to your children explain the tradition science behind this traditional practice very well so that even they don't feel discriminated uh, i hope you understand all these things so if you like this video please like and share it with your friends and if you have any queries please comment in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you for watching bye bye